Hello, I am Brett from Bearded Man Studios, and today I'll be talking about the network controls from Networked Mono Behavior Derivatives. And what this is, is a simple editor that we have made ourselves for you to properly change the states of your networked objects in an easy fashion. So we have this Network Controls uh, drop-down and you can simply see this drop down on any uh, networked mono behavior derivative of any prefab or object or script that you drag you, when you drag this script onto that object or prefab or anything. So if I were to make a new game object here, create empty, and drag in my networked mono behavior example uh, script into it, and for some reason that's locking up. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you can see that it has my network controls tab on it. So I'm going to delete that, go back to my example networked mono behavior, and just start from here. So we have our basics from the simple networked mono behavior, which is the don't destroy unload, the destroy on disconnect, and allow ownership change that comes over to the networked mono behavior. And then we also have authoritative sync distance, authoritative teleport sync distance, authoritative sync rotation. Uh, these are additional values that you are allowed to set depending whether or not you are using server is authoritative. So I'm going to open up the network controls and our first uh, block is our server is authority and that is basically saying this object will be owned by the server and I am the owner of it as well the enable client side prediction makes it so that the transition from so let's say you have a first person shooter and you want the client to have free roam in their game and just constantly shooting move around without like constantly like uh, jiggering up and down on those values uh, so say like you see some crazy rotation happen over the network, well that's because the client side prediction was probably not enabled to where it was just uh, looking like it was jiggering across and it was you know like skipping a beat where it would be like a value from 90 turn into negative 90 of rotation instantaneously. So that is where the client side prediction goes in where it is synchronizing on the client to what the server last uh, read of that object. So what we're doing is we're storing the frames of what's happening on the server and syncing that information over to the client for the client to properly allocate its uh, data to see if, it's, if there's any mismatch to what the server sees and what the client sees. Um, so now I'm going to move on to the networking throttle. So let me disable these. Now on the networking throttle, this is, as the description says, this is how long in seconds to wait before updating across the network. Uh, priority can be emulated here. This includes netsync variables. And what this means is that um, if I had netsync attributes applied to my variables, it, it also uh, bases its updates on this throttle. Now, I can say it's going to take every 10 seconds before these variables are synced, or I can make it every, you know, quarter of a second, or you know just how I want to sync this data over the network and how fast do I want to do so uh, depending on your games you can set this to you know, 0 0.25 which is uh, the default and if you are not doing the default you depending on your game uh, if it's fast paced or very slow if it's turn based you can set this to like three every three seconds five just to give it that extra room of not sending too much data at once and just giving it a little more breathing room over the network so you don't have to change it it works fine out of the box and it's very uh, consistent data packed and does all the bit compression that it needs to do over the network to be very reliable and 
uh, as transparent as it needs to be while also being secure but if you want to send data more quickly more reliably um, you can just set it to a quarter of a second and that is t totally fine too if you do set it to zero as you can see here it is putting it in the red and the reason for this is is because it's sending it so fast that it is just unoptimized in general so we do not recommend that you do set this throttle to zero it is totally uh, not recommended by us because of how much information you're sending um, per nanosecond or millisecond depending on how fast your game program app is running so I'm just gonna leave it as a quarter of a second uh, or if I'm doing a turn-based game, I can leave it at every five seconds or 15, maybe a minute, you know, just depending on how I want to go about it. So I'm going to leave it to every second that this data will be updated. Uh, interpolation. Interpolation is for us to properly sync those variables that you get as new information and for you to interpret them and to synchronize to them in a smooth fashion uh, rather than just instantly uh, jumping to that new position or new rotation or new scale right away we want to lerp into those uh, positions so if I enable this you'll see that these uh, turn back on and my lerp speeds right here I can make it uh, really fast or uh, really slow and I can tell it when to stop on the distance as well as the angle the angle that it needs to stop at so within a certain range that it reaches this angle or distance that I don't need to interpolate any further than this because it has reached with within this set distance that is given I'm just going to reset these variables really quick um, oh, I guess that doesn't work as well and go back oh there we go Oh, sorry, the networking throttle was a uh, 0.10. It was not a quarter of a second. But quarter of a second is what I would recommend, but 0.10 works fine too. Uh, so that is interpolation. Interpolation is pretty straightforward. If you want to up your speed, slow it, make it fast, it's really up to you. It works perfectly fine the way it is if you want to just leave it on the default values, but you're free to change those values here as well or disable it entirely. Uh, so here's some easy controls and this relates to the positions that it's getting not necessarily interpolation by itself but interpolation is a way for you to uh, set the speeds of this lerp and other values whereas the lerp position lerp scale lerp rotation this is all depending on if the it should lerp now if I turn these off it's not going to lerp, it's just going to instantly go to the X, Y, Z, Z, Y, X for the rotation, and I can disable this so that it does not uh, lerp those values, or sync those values over, and it's only going to sync whatever values that I interpret it to sync. Same with scale. As well as I can disable all this so it does not sync the values of the XYZ of position, rotation, and scale. So it is totally up to you on how you want to synchronize uh, the position, rotation, and scale of your object if you want to do so. If this is like a stand object or a static object that does not move, doesn't do anything, doesn't grow, doesn't rotate, doesn't uh, change its position, then you can easily just disable this entirely and not use any of this extra data that gets sent over the network depending if it has been moving, scaling, or rotating as it is unnecessary data to just sync in case it does. But if you're not, if you have an object that is consistently moving or rotating or scaling, then this is what you would enable depending on what you want to sync across the network. So if I just want to, if I only care about the position and I want it to lerp as well to make it very smooth, then I would just turn this on. If I only want to change the rotation of an object that is networked, then I would just do this one. And same with scale. If I just want to do scale, 
So that is entirely up to you on how you want to do the easy controls for your object. Uh, miscellaneous, it basically is extra parameters for your networked mono behavior and this is determining whether you would like uh, UDP reliable to be on and if it is not on then you um, you are having consistent updates that are going to the object that is going to consistently feed it information so that it is up to date. Uh, I would recommend not turning this on if you are consistently sending updates, if you are synchronizing variables and you have everything else disabled like this is right now, uh, you can turn this UDP reliable flag on, but I, I still don't see uh, a big need for this, but it is there for the people that do want the data to reliably get over to the other side. So that is UDP reliable. The is player of the networked mono behavior is basically a way for you to determine an object or rather say that an object is a player object and this is very beneficial in your code because this means that you can get um, the player object uh, as well in code and what this means is that you can go to let's just do private or rather protected override um, network start owning player and then I should have player object this means that this player object should be set to whatever this part this current owning player has and this is a simple way to make a getter for that player object of that player if that makes sense. So uh, let's say I have a list of players of the networking. So if I go networking, primary socket, players, and I go through this list of players and I just want to find out, oh, who's this player, player specific object that he's using, and I want to uh, send a variable or send a RPC to this client or player using their current uh, player object then I can just say oh let's go to this player player object and then I can RPC or authoritative RPC to that uh, object so that is what the is player uh, boolean is here in a miscellaneous it is a uh, good it has extra functionality related to it uh, you do not want to have is player set to many different objects. You only want to have one of these tied to a particular player at one given time. That is why it is called the is player because it is like a hero object. You don't have multiple hero objects of this player. At least in the case of Forge Networking. We can expand upon this to be a little more robust later, but for now it is a singular type of is player object where you can pull that uh, player object out of the network or across the network depending on how you are synchronizing your game. So that is what is player does. The destroy on disconnect. This is something that is already talked about. Uh, over here on the same simple network to mono behavior the dish around disconnect it is just an extra flag that turns it off and on as you can see uh, it, it's just inside this network controls so it's just another toggle so we probably want to fix that so that it doesn't display on the network to mono behavior you could probably take it out and just leave it as the boolean toggle over here and then the teleport to initial position. So what this means is like if you were to be the client and let's say you join the server and everything is spawning in the center of the map before it finally synchronizes its data across the network to go to the right position that it is supposed to be at. That is what teleport to initial position does. It makes it so the client does not see these objects spawning in the center of the map and then moving to the correct position uh, as it gets a variable updates and receives all its updates from the server. So that is what the teleport to initial position does. The destroy on disconnect is player, UDP reliable, the easy controls, interpolation, 
networking throttle and server is authority and that is what the network controls can do for you if you have any questions at all feel free to leave them down in the comments below or to send us an email or talk to us on epic join or slack depending if you have purchase forge networking and thanks for watching